There's nothing I love more when it comes to the behind the scenes process of animation than the pilot. It's always so interesting seeing the prototype, weird, alternate universe version of a show I adore, and Amphibia is no exception, with the short pilot Amphibiland recently being uploaded to YouTube. Although it's more of a reel than a mini episode, it still features so many differences from the main series that I couldn't just help but to talk about. Let's run through Amphibiland, spot all the differences between this prototype and the final product, and and how some things in this pilot could actually still come into play. With all that said, let's dive in. First off, the art style is identical to the series proper, with some small differences, such as the way eyes are illustrated on human characters. For example, Anne has more oval-shaped eyes in the series, and her eyelashes aren't nearly as long. Speaking of which, Anne isn't missing a shoe, she actually has all two. The idea to only have her keep one shoe while Grime holds onto the other was probably a later addition once they realized the shoe could actually serve sentimental purposes in the story. The line depth of characters and color palette of Pilot Wartwood or Lily Paddington also feel a smidge different. The colors mainly feel warmer, but I believe the biggest difference is how Lily Paddington functions compared to its main series equivalent. While Wartwood is still a swamp, it's much more of a farmer town and feels more civilized with bridges. Houses primarily next to each other on land, instead of being spread out and separated by water. The houses also feel larger in the final product, whereas in the pilot, they feel more miniature, tailored for the scale of a frog. Although one thing that's remained consistent are the doors of a house, as Anne has to duck to enter and exit the planter household. Instead of Sprig as Anne's partner in crime across Amphibia, the pilot gave us a different frog to kick it with. Weed, voiced by the one and only Thorup Van Orman. How much he differs from Sprig, aside from appearance, we can't really tell. He seems to still have that same rush into adventure and regret it when he's seconds away from death, but figures it out because he's quick on his feet attitude our Sprig has. Creator Matt Brawley also mentioned that Polly did exist in the pilot, she just didn't make it to the real. So don't worry, Polly was always loved. A lot of the townsfolk we see appear to just be generic, nameless frogs that don't really stand out from one another, as opposed to the colorful and varied cast of characters that we've gotten to know over the course of the first season. Which makes sense. Again, it's a pilot. The only exception I noticed being Sadie Croker. The main appeal of her design remained intact, though in the main series she has a new color palette and the addition of her bulbous white hair. Although, her pet spider Archie also has a different look and name in this pilot. Originally named Fluffy, this spider is a lot more forwardly vicious in behavior and appearance compared to the cute and cuddly Archie with startling abilities that we know and love in the series proper. Other animals and creatures also have similar designs in the series, like the snails, with solid black eyes instead of the much cuter pupils that we're used to. Anne is seen documenting her time in Amphibia thus far in a journal, an element missing in the series likely because Hop Hop already has so many books. When she pulls out a photograph of pilot Sasha and Marcy, good goobity goop, their pilot designs threw me for a loop. Sasha's hair and facial structure, Marcy's eyes, it's, it's just wrong. They look like peanut characters. I'm sure people can still find them charming in their own right, but I definitely find their final designs to be leagues better. Ultimately, this photograph would be tweaked to include Anne, serving as a Polaroid all three girls carry around them. Something worth noticing is that Marcy and Sasha's uniform colors have always remained the same green and red. Of course, I'm reminded of the gems in the Calamity Box, and its color-coordinated gems. The green gem, and the sometimes purple, sometimes apparently pinkish red gem. One could assume that the girls obtaining odd mysterious powers through the gems was always a part of the plan. Bessie also appears to be missing her shell in this version, with the family wagon also sporting a different look, but <clears throat> come on, of course a prop like a wagon itself isn't going to stay exactly the same way. You have so much more time and talented artists to make it look cooler with a series. Speaking of looking cooler, I definitely prefer the planter household that we've gotten, yet that doesn't mean the pilot household isn't worth talking about, as it appears it wasn't originally a farm, no indication of any vegetables in sight, on top of the planters potentially having a different last name, as the giant P was originally displayed as a giant H. While this could just stand solely for Hop Hop, I wouldn't rule out the idea of their last names originally being a pun on hopping around. Pilot Hop Hop mainly looks the same, with the series proper sporting a few altered facial proportions, adjustment in the color palette of his clothes, and his blue ascot that really pulls him together. 
Pilot Hop Hop alludes to there being more to Amphibia or Amphiboland than what Anne perceives. This Hop Hop is kind of flaunting his extended knowledge of Amphibia to the audience, whereas series proper Hop Hop keeps that knowledge to himself, looking out for the children he looks after without spilling the beans. Grime pierces a map of Amphiboland with his dagger, causing the map to illuminate with Amphibian runes and highlighted areas, leaning into the more mystical elements of the series that Season 1 shied away from, but it seems as if it'll be integrated into the story soon. Actually, during a recent AMA, Brawley mentioned, the pilot really deserves its own discussion, but the only thing I miss is how grimy and mystical that version of Amphibia seemed. In development, I got explicit notes that the studio was no longer interested in adventure or magic, so we tried to sit away from that stuff a bit, or at least, saved it for later. After Anne and Weed find a frog corpse, and we get a menacing shot of Toe Tower, which doesn't feel as huge and menacing as the mainline equivalent, I must say, I do enjoy the three skulls here more than their replacement, a stone carving and two gargoyles, but that's just a matter of taste. Grime commands his less goofy, more stone soldiers to bring him the human, likely referring to Sasha, another plot point that I imagine was set in stone from the very beginning. Anne would be with the frogs, Sasha with the toads, and Marcy with the newts. Back to the toads though, notice they have glowing purplish eyes, a detail that survived into the series proper with the episode reunion, although the reasoning behind it is still unknown. Going into much more of a direct montage, Weed is ambushed by a toad that we can assume to be Grime, then Anne and Weed find a mystical ancient snake charmer that does its job well against the gigantic snakes, although it still intimidates Anne enough to smack the tool out of Sprig's hands. Anne is chased by fly-riding frogs, wearing the corpses of rats, attempting to capture her. Judging by the nets, I assume these are probably bounty hunters that see Anne as a valuable human prize. I can see that being an aspect that was removed from the series once they decided that Anne shouldn't be a walking target in this brand new world. The iconic scene of Anne and Sprig surrounded by Mudman in the theme song, and later in Anne vs. Wild, actually originates from this pilot. Granted, Anne lacks her tennis racket here, which is unfortunate as it doesn't necessarily showcase her bravery, an important part of her character. Weed gives Anne a nasty high five with his tongue, and we get an exciting sequence that I hope to god makes its way into the series proper at some point. Grime and Weed engage in a battle in the midst of Amphibia ruins. Grime moving swift with precision, while Weed is barely able to dodge and catch his breath. Backed into a corner, blocking Grimes' sword at the last possible moment with his dagger. I really hope this is being saved for a major moment in the series. I don't care if it's the end of season 2, I don't care if it's in season 3. I would love for our boy Sprig to take on Grime at some point. The ruins they fight in actually aren't too different in appearance from the ruins outside of Newtopia, so maybe this fight can still unfold this season. After a few more miscellaneous shots, such as frogs dancing, a weird cult-like group, and another scene that would get recreated in the theme song, with Anne grabbing weed and sprinting from harm's way, i.e. a giant boulder, we end on weed being chased by toads, before jumping off a bridge, landing on a giant flying bird piloted by Anne, before flying off into the distance, cueing the logo. I'd love if the planters actually obtained such a beast in the show at some point, though instead of a beast, make the bird kinda cute and cuddly. You know, like Bessie, but with wings. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the Amphibia pilot? Is there anything you wish made it into the original series? Are there any changes you're glad for? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RyanTubleVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can always find me at Box. We're also on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Vox, signing out.